Yeah, you guys got a nice rotating crew, right? Yeah, we do a bunch of folks. Nice, nice. Okay, well, we're live with uh, Kofo Live and Undead. Uh, unfortunately, I'm your host, Daniel Crozier, and I'm here with the uh, Denver Horror Collective, Josh Schlossberg, Jameis Wilkes. Excellent. No booth. <laughs> And you guys uh, are coming out with a, a new anthology book. Uh, oh, I can't see that. Uh, Terror 52A. Right. Running on. So tell us a little bit about this. Can we take it again? Well, Terror 5280, um, it is an anthology of stories that take place. Um, Primarily in the Denver Metroplex, but we opened it up for all of Colorado. And we wanted experience as, as the collective and what the whole publishing realm was. Okay. And so, but we also had open submissions. So, nice. some of the members of our group. Yeah. And then uh, some outside submissions. And we were fortunate enough to get. Some amazing folks like uh, Green of the Set and uh, Stephen Graham Jones, Carter Wilson, a host of others, including us awesome folks in the, the collective and uh, participate in. Nice. Um, yeah, I, I see uh, Josh uh, Viola from uh, Hex Publishers is in there. We've had him on the show before. Um, so he's he's a pretty interesting guy, and I know he works with uh, Stephen Graham Jones uh, you know, often. Um, how long has uh, the Denver uh, you know horror collective been together? Like, you know, what was it? What's the initial uh, mission uh, statement? For that? Right. Well, we should probably come clean about the whole thing before we go any further. Excellent. So we put this out as if it were a fiction anthology. So, as in, the stories are made up. Mm -hmm. The truth is, these are all true accounts about the things that go on in Colorado that are oh. pretty terrible. Okay. And so we created something called Denver Horror Collective a couple of years ago as a way to kind of get these stories out there in a way that they would actually get out. Because yeah. people didn't believe us. Okay. And frankly, a lot of people are preventing us from speaking our truth about what's really going on in Colorado. Okay. So lots of people are coming into the state mm -hmm. and um, experiencing things like um, creatures in the mountains that come down in the winter, um, houses that have been scraped and then rebuilt and then kind of occupied those individuals as well. Terrible things like that. Um, I'm a journalist. We couldn't even get things out that way. Mm -hmm. So we, we were getting shut down. So we decided let's form this horror collective of horror fiction writers okay. as a way to kind of tell stories, pretend that they're stories, mm -hmm. and that way we can actually get it past our censors. Okay. So this is just a warning to people who are trying to come into the state um, to not do so because it's a dangerous, terrible, terrible place. Okay. What, what kind of stories? Well, let's go through some of these quote stories. Okay. Um, there is a nearby amusement park where mm -hmm. there is something on the underground level there that you don't really want to visit. Um, there are, what else do we have here? We have, of course, Cheeseman Park, which everyone yeah. knows. So it's yep. a, a park where children play, mm -hmm. yet there are corpses underfoot. Yep. Like, how do people not know about that? Oh, right. Or how are people not taking that seriously? Well, and, and, and people that, that come through from time to time will find remains. They do. Yeah. And that's that's a terrible thing. Um, ghouls in the mountains, of course. Um, okay. We hear tales about that, but that's happened to people that we know. Um, that's one of the stories in this particular thing. Um, crack or vampires as well. Oh, okay. Interesting. So, yeah. So that's occurred out in a town called Joe's. It's a little bit out on the plains. So these are the sorts of things that we're telling about in this quote, fiction and anthology of it. Okay. Wow, that sounds uh, you know, pretty engaging, pretty enticing. Well, the truth is we probably, you, you should probably strike this part from the podcast. Because, it's going out live. Well, <laughs> because the reality is we don't want you to be responsible for this as well. Because mm -hmm. there's hell to pay for what we're saying and the way we're getting it out there. Okay. So 
ideally you'd cut this whole part and then we could just go on talking about it as if it were just a horror fiction anthology. So okay. from here on out, we won't mention the truth behind all this and we'll just okay. talk about it like fiction. Okay. Okay. We, we won't talk about the vengeful ghosts um, at the intersection of 7th and Calumet. Okay. A couple of flipped houses there, but something happened in the, in the basement. Yeah, we'll, I, I won't get into details like the you know, ambulance chasing law firm that's at the, at the intersection. And, well, I think there's a radio station at that corner, too, or something like that. Okay. The, you know, yeah, and, and these are things, you know, I myself, are completely unaware of, except for the achievement park aspect, of course. Uh, but all the more reason to purchase the book. Yeah, so these are just stories. Mm -hmm. And so to get back to the Denver Horror Collective yeah. genesis, a couple years ago there were several of us who wanted to create a writer's critique group for horror writers, because some of us were in different critique groups. I know I was, yeah. and they couldn't handle horror. Okay. They weren't horror fans. Yeah. So it was a few of us, actually several whom are in this room today. So it was myself, Zach Hennessy, Gary Roby, and um, who else was beginning? Um, Catherine, Catherine, Catherine Spader? Catherine Spader, that's right. So she's still affiliated. So she, we were the first four folks that just created Denver Horror Writers, which was our mm -hmm. horror writing critique. And okay. then over time we created, we added more members, and then we sort of expanded our scope and we called ourselves Denver Horror Collective to encompass all the different things. I came in, let's see, probably about 18 months ago. Mm, okay. In Josh's words, part, part the mists of time back to the beginning of 2018. And, uh, so long ago. I, mean, I know, it was ages, <laughs> ago, ages ago. And uh, my experience coming in, they were already kind of a well-oiled mission, which was nice. Mm -hmm. And um, just some general guidelines, you know, participation, you know, at least a couple meetings before you start submitting stories. Okay. And uh, I was getting back in the, the writing groove. And so my experience coming in after they were already going, that was great. And not long after I started going, uh, Mr. Murphy, who's an audience editor to Sean Murphy, I started coming. And... Um, just seeing each other grow as writers, even the veterans in the group, mm -hmm. um, pretty fantastic thing to experience. And I, I've, I've been a member of other writing groups. This one has been the best as far as uh, growing as a writer without um, absolutely delivering a scathing, you know, critique or yeah. review of someone's work. Um, there's an open view as to what, okay, if you're at this level, and then uh, the arc of, seeing the arc of progression. It's yeah. been a good, it's been a good place for growth. Absolutely. Yeah, we've actually been doing little Facebook live streams of our Denver Board Writers meetings. If anyone wants to check us mm -hmm. out before showing up, they're yeah. afraid of us. <laughs> Uh, that'd be that'd be great. Uh, the next time uh, you guys uh, do that, shoot me a link so I can you know post it to our Facebook awesome. page. Because I think I think that's that's an interesting aspect that uh, a lot of you know creatives either shy away from or don't get enough of. Um, you know, me going back to art school, and, which I went to with uh, Zach Hennessy here uh, back at uh, the Rocky Mountain College of Art and Design days. Um, we would uh, you know have to go through that. You know, on the fine arts department, um, it, it was it was pretty rigorous. A lot of people left in tears. Eventually, you learned to learn how to take feedback, pick out nuggets of what people are saying. You know, learn how to apply it, learn how to ignore other stuff, um, and then also you know how to how to lead into a critique, with positive reinforcement, and you know come up with you know suggestions. Right. I always lead in tears. Person, yeah, like every time, but that's 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 just my daily, yeah, day to day life. So, yeah, you're, you're putting your heart and soul. Into I'm, just, no, I'm just like crying all day long. Oh, like, that's yeah, no matter what's going on. So. Well, that's a day. I'm crying on the inside right now. <laughs> but, the, but the balance we find with that is that Josh leaves everyone else in tears when he's done. Yeah, I oh, share that, that's good. I spread the wealth. Yeah. That. <laughs> But so we're not, just make the, it right. we're not just the yes. writer's critique group, though that's the yeah. flagship, that's the heart of the group, but mm -hmm. we've expanded to do different events. Yeah. So we did something last year, which was 
semi a part of Denver Horror Collective and basically was because there was a lot of Denver Horror Collective members called the mm. Fire Demons. Oh, so that okay. was a reading, horror fiction readings at Lighthouse Writers Workshop. And what it was was people would read a little story and they would talk about their own fear that generated that story. So it was okay. a little bit confessional and then a reading on top of that. Oh, wow. So that was really fun. And then we had just a month ago, we had Music to My Fears, which was horror fiction reading set to live music. So we had a ton of folks, including folks here in this audience, uh, do the performance. Sean read from his story, The Blue Lady, which is in Terror 15280, and had his son playing bass accompaniment. It's pretty cool. Nice. And so yeah, we had a sold out show of 80 folks at Lighthouse Writers Workshop. And you might be experimenting more with that kind of music reading component. Um, what else do we have in there? Well, we, we've been trying for some time to also um, link up with local uh, visual arts. And I think right now, um, what, what we're trying to work out is uh, what, what can we bring to it? Mm -hmm. You can get online and find out information and make contacts and things like that. Um, you can have, um, you know, do Skype, you know, all of that. I think what I discovered in the collective on the, the writer's end that we can bring to the, uh, the artist part is just face-to-face -face meetings. Yeah. You know, with it. Because there's, there's nothing like it. Right. Right. Skype gets crowded really quick and people have to take turns talking and uh, so it's when, when a bunch of artists get together and just start talking, artists, creatives, writers, mm -hmm. then I think you can you can start forming those relationships, start right. linking up artists with writers. Hey, I haven't really thought of a story working out as a graphic novel. Yeah. Um, yes. Covers, yeah. covers for books as well. Exactly. Who, who made this cover? Um, an artist named the Rip Rock. <laughs> He, so he, he hangs yeah. around the yeah. horror collective sometimes. He's a shadowy figure. He looks oh, even quite better. a bit like me. He might have a little bit more hair. Okay. Um, okay. So. Yeah. Um, yeah. That that's great to you know get together, meet, you know, bring people out. Because so often, you know, individual writers, individual artists, they kind of get stuffed up in their in their home or in their studio, and you know, kind of shut themselves off from that interaction. Yeah, again with that, that critique session that's yeah. so you know so very uh, you know much needed you know uh, to really progress you know get that instant feedback yeah we teamed up with squidworks we did the first oh, yeah. artist meetup Scan -yum, was yeah. um about a week ago i'm not an artist i don't know how to draw so i wasn't invited but oh. we're starting to do <laughs> stuff like that um we have our newsletter the epitaph which we put out every month we've got a lot of different information like Interviews, whatever's going on in the local area. We've actually included some online stories as well that didn't quite make it into the paperback version, but we wanted to put those out to the world. Um, okay. We have a uh, podcast. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I um, started doing Janus After Midnight. Um, I wanted to, I kind of had the idea to do my own podcast, and the, the philosophy behind it was to talk to really artists and creatives at any level, whether they're just starting or uh, veterans, and just talk to them about the aesthetics of horror. Yeah. Uh, I love podcasts, I listen to all types. Um, the ones that at the time, and I'm just talking about my personal taste, that I kind of got weary of was, you know, you've got eight people kind of geeking out and tripping over each other, you know, um, trying to talk about the latest film coming out, the mm -hmm. latest uh, Funko, um, yeah, and things like that. Yeah. I love all those things. I'm just not interested in it as far as uh, discussion. And so I thought if I could talk to like one or two people at a time, mm -hmm. and um, and so I ended up talking to Josh about. It. I was like, well, we really need to do something for the, the collective as well. And then Josh was like, well, why don't we just make it all one thing? And so uh, that, that's what we're doing right now. It's slow going. You know, uh, but finally, you know, picked the training wheels off. Had to learn about uh, what to do, you know, with podcasting. Sure. Uh, take it up a notch and get yeah. your radio announcer voice going, you know, yeah. things like that. So you're not talking into your shoes. Um, 
so it's a learning process, and uh, we'll pro probably at some point interview just about everyone in this room right now. But that sounds um, fun. He unfortunately started with me. That yep. was, oh yeah, uh, that was his curse. So, but it's a Jameis After Midnight podcast sponsored by Denver yes. Board Collective. Nice. Board, basically. Yeah. How many of those have you, you just recently got that going then? Yeah, it's four, four episodes in. Oh, okay. Yeah, um, I just, uh, the last one, uh, well, I started off with Josh, and then uh, had one of X Long with uh, Grace Borton. Mm -hmm. uh, this last one I had with uh, Gerard Schott, who we nice. both yep. uh, are very familiar with. Your painting buddy. Yeah. Yeah. The first episode was just a monologue by me, and I was kind of, okay, how do I do this? This audio thing. How do I adjust the, yeah. you know, what what sounds good? So that was the the test episode. So it's getting better and better, um, and we're trying a few folks and trademarks with it. You know, to kind of separate it from other things. So you can find it on DenverHorror.com. That's the website where we got all the stuff there. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, it sounds like you guys got an amazing amount of stuff, you know, going on and in the works. Um, you know, with this uh, coming out, it, you know, Josh, you said that, you know, your background is a journalist. Um, yeah, how long have you, it sounds like you've been writing for that. Kind of. Yeah. Kinda, in some capacity. Yeah. yeah. Um, have you ever, have you always, well, you know, as your career as a journalist, uh, you know, what kind of journalism is it like, uh, you know, uh, Along the lines of like Denver Post, you know, just interviews, day to day stuff. Or... Denver Post would never have me. Oh, okay. <laughs> and I would never have them. Okay. So it's kind of neutral. Okay. But um, I do investigative stuff. I focus oh, on social and environmental controversies. Okay. So it actually goes hand in hand with some of my fiction because I do a lot of environmental stuff. So I learn about chronic wasting disease yeah. in deer and elk herds. And then I write a story yeah. about chronic wasting disease because all of this science is basically or it's already horror stories yes. waiting to be written. Yeah. So um, I write what I call biological humor and yes. pretty much all of that comes from my scientific research or the articles that I write. Oh wow. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. Today yeah uh, so many things become you know so prevalent. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it seems like every day is, is almost a new horror story just being revealed. Um, yeah, brought to light or you know, something that's always been there. Yeah, no, it's true. And nature for me is definitely a touchstone. And uh, yeah, so my little separate entity is Josh's worst nightmare, mm -hmm. you know, which is of course affiliated with Denver Horror. But um, that's kind of where I focus on everything biological. So if you're into okay. nature, maybe the dark side of nature, check out Josh's worst nightmare. And of course, I bring all that into Denver Horror Collective. I force that upon him. And, yeah, at the same time too. Yeah, you know, even if it's you know taking what's real in nature and applying it you know, to some level of fiction, it's a great great vehicle to, to bring those issues to life. That's the way I look at it. The idea of the narrative as being a way to get information to people in a way that it's not forcing it down their throat. You yeah. know, like a lot of say you have a cause or something like that, and you're an activist. You, know, you care about this issue. Right. A lot of times it doesn't really work for people. Either yeah. they already care about it in advance or not. Um, in journalism, you can give people facts and numbers and data that people don't really always digest that either unless yeah. they're ready to. But if you give them a story where they're into the character, they get caught up in the plot, yeah. then you kind of, you learn something at the end, whether you like it or not. Yeah, that, that narrative, something for them to relate to. Right, exactly. Yeah, uh, exactly. yeah. interesting characters, hopefully not just torture. Right. No, <laughs> personally, I'm not into that, but I don't judge. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, Jameis, you probably are. <laughs> he's the type. Yeah, he's the type. You, you and your buddy uh, Gerard. <laughs> Redeeming quality of torture porn. I, I did not come tonight expecting to be an apologist for. Oh, okay. <laughs> are those stories now? They don't always end this way. Uh, the at least it provides a basis for. Um, Catharsis and getting back sure. at the bad you know, okay. just showing basically how wicked something is. Um, now I realize in it. What's interesting is that first of all, I hate that 
but and I, it's not even my favorite um, subgenre, but I kind of don't like the the moniker that it's earned of uh, torture porn because if you look at the, it's interesting all of the franchises, whether it be Saw you know, or, or something like that. Usually, that first film actually has something pretty good to say. Yeah. Or, or it's 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 well done. You know, the story is well crafted, and then. Mm -hmm. The sequels, and I know a lot of sequels are guilty of this anyway, but the sequels then are the ones that kind of earn that torture porn, you know, badge. Yeah. yeah. From that. So, um, yeah, case in point, saw the first one I thought was excellent. Yeah. Uh, one of the things I took from that is I would, I would love to see Danny Glover in much more horror. And I, I think the dude has a, a, a place in that. And, You'll see him in Jumanji. Oh, it's close enough. That's just horrible. <laughs> yeah. Horrible. Horrible. So, yeah. It's the it's the I B L E at the end. Yeah. 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 yeah, but I. Um, the other great thing about the, you know singing the praises of the group is I, I've never picked that up from anyone in the group where they they kind of latch on to a subgenre and then mm -hmm. start picking on it. You know. Oh, okay. And we have. All kinds of subgenres in the group yeah, going right. on, and just some amazingly talented people. Subgenres I haven't considered engaging or reading before until I joined the group. Right. Mm -hmm. Reading them in a critique, since I'm like, you know what, it's, it's got something to say, and I, I need to sit up and pay attention to it. Yeah, and we're going to be hearing more stuff because we're starting up these novel writing subgroups. Mm -hmm. So. Denver Horror Writers thus far has also been people writing novels and submitting chapters here and there, but it's mm. been a lot of short stories, which is awesome. And I personally write both. I think most people in the group actually write both, but this is going to focus specifically on those who are working on novels. So we're going to split it up into smaller groups that way. And that should be pretty excellent. And, uh, so yeah, for people who are watching or listening and you write or and you live in the area, come by, like it. A lot of our model is it's kind of like open source software. Like mm -hmm. we're not a click per se. Like if you're interested in writing and you're not a murderer, you're welcome. Yeah, and not a close crew. Yeah, no, yeah. no we're open to everyone except for except for murderers. And, well, I don't know if you've done your time. Pedophiles. You're, no pedophiles. All right, we're gonna probably yeah. be <laughs> It might actually help to be a murderer. Yeah, Gary's inviting you to be murderer. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> murderer is welcome. Uh, reform. 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 Uh, not necessarily. Oh, okay. <laughs> Zach didn't know about the no Your grandfather yeah. didn't. So. Yeah. <laughs> the murderer part. That's, that's totally fine. But we did want to make it so it's like, you know, you, if whatever level you're at, whatever you're interested in, all we're interested in is a commitment to being a part of what's going on. Nice. And, um, yeah, and same with even the anthology here. We got folks of all sorts of experience level. Um, we think that's how good writing is made, right? You know, it's not just, all right, here's the experts in the ivory tower. That's great. You know, we have some big names, some masters in this, and, and we love their stuff and we learn from them. We have some of them on our advisory council. Okay. So we, but, you know, anyone who is putting pen to paper or fingers to plastic are welcome. Nice. Um, yeah, how many uh, other, have you produced uh, other anthologies like this, or is this like the first one with the group? Personally, I have, I have not. Uh, I've been an editor for publications, okay. but not to do with this sort of stuff. Okay. okay. So, so this is, you yeah, know, new territory. Yes. However, we should say, and we'll give a shout out to Henry Snyder here. So he put mm -hmm. together the layout. But he was also a lot of the brains behind putting the actual book together. Okay. So those of us on the editorial team, and um, I will read out those who are on the editorial team. You know, so that's myself, Gary Roby, Mindy Bezdek, Bobby Crew, Desi D, Lisa Mabrutis, Thomas Mabrutis, and Jameis Wilkes. Um, so we've all been um, a part of you know, doing the editing and, and yeah. the concept and everything like that. But so far as the physicality of making all of the details just right. That was Henry Snyder. He was part of something called Fiction Foundry. He was publishing horror for a while. So he's a part of the collective now, and we're super psyched to have him. And basically, when we started this, I know I was partially just lying to myself. Like, yeah, we'll, we'll know what to do when the time comes. And it turned out to be we had all the right people, and 
this is super quality stuff. You yeah. Know? yeah. Uh, that's fantastic. The, the, uh, not only the editing, but also like you know, the design, the formatting, the getting everything ready to print. Right. That's always like, yeah, you know, me coming from the, the comic book world, mm. that's always, you know, a, a piece that tends to be overlooked until you're like, right. okay, great. The book's done. Now, how do we put it together? That's exactly. Oh what I mean. fuck! Yeah, <laughs> Henry. I mean, just to well on what Josh was saying, he was critical in the design aspect of it because when I was coming up with the initial design, we all got excited about it. Mm -hmm. um, Henry, with his publishing experience, was like. Kind of offer a suggestion. You know, that's always loaded, you know, when you get into kind of or <laughs> yeah. collaboration with someone. <laughs> but he had had a reputation enough at that point where, you know, absolutely. And um, he really, for lack of a better word, he just punched it up as far as the front cover design. Originally, uh, this was my original design right here, and everything okay. fit in it. And you kind of have a reflection of the trees, or it might look like some kind of creepy root system mm -hmm. or something like that. Um, he was able to clean that out on the, the front cover. He's like, I love the blood spatter. Can you make it red? I'm like, that's great. He sent me the, you know, the first um, proof of that. And I was like, this looks awesome. Can you turn it down a little bit? Can make it a little closer to at least what we visualize as mm -hmm. quote unquote real blood. Okay. Um, and he was like, uh, absolutely. And he also has enough of the skills in publishing. He, he knows how it's going to look here yeah. and not just on the computer screen yeah and uh so he was he was critical in, in that aspect my whole point how many stories uh, like that in this project where you know you get the the minds of two or more people together and you can put up something great mm -hmm. yeah and everything in this was created by collective members. So, yeah. um, you know, we have several collective members who are published in the anthology, several other folks who are just living in Colorado or whatever. But in terms of the editorial committee and the layout and the cover, everyone was Denver Board Collective Member. And that's kind of the, the premise behind this. This is mm -hmm. like a, you know, a group project and to get everyone's voices out there. That kind of thing. Nice. Uh, now, kind of changing gears a little bit. Uh, Jim, you, uh, You've got more of a, a visual arts background too. Yes. And as far as writing, that just came recently, right? In the last um, few years. Well, I got back into writing. Oh, okay. Um, in, in recent years, um, I loved doing it. The first time I got published, um, once upon a time, ooh, uh, there was a new category coming out with. This, this new thing called indie publishers in the, the early bodies. Mm -hmm. In 2003, I submitted a story, a uh, zombie story, to Hellbound Books Publishing. It was still out there. Mm -hmm. um, uh, called When the Spirit Leaveth the Flesh. And I, I was going by the name Jack Wilkins you know, at the mm -hmm. time. And you read it now, and it's, uh, I am heavily, heavily. Um, uh, leaning on Richard Matheson and George Romero. In fact, if you took those two guys, that, that's what... That's an interesting love child. Uh, yeah, <laughs> my story was. Yeah, very much kind of a last man on earth type okay. thing. So actually, my first experience with an anthology was, was that, and I was working with Walt Fry and a production team where half it was in the United States and half in England. Mm, okay. So that was interesting because... Yeah. The net was still kind of newish yeah. at that point, and so there was some international mailing going on okay. uh, with that. And uh, it, I came into that realm, and it, this shows just how much how old I am. You know, I'm actually printing up a manuscript and mailing to a, a publisher. So it was kind of good bridging that whole that whole thing. I got out of writing uh, for a while, but was still doing art. Um, love to do art and then in recent years just decided to get back into it because i i love to write that's cool uh do you ever like uh, create uh, visuals with uh you know your short stories i did um one thing i discovered in trying to do that is i can do sequential art mm -hmm. it's not my passion 
Okay. Um, because and I, I found that, um, and a lot of people were saying, "Well, you're doing some interesting storytelling here." Well, I, I found that I didn't so much like doing scenes, you know, entire scenes of back and forth, you know, yeah. with the same faces over and over. Every frame in this graphic novel that I was doing was something completely different from what was uh, previous. So. If I ever tackle that again, it's probably going to be something like that. So right now, I primarily work as a cover artist. I've done a few of those. Uh, shout out real quick to my friends who have a comic called Spiral Mind. And, uh, nice. Yeah, it, they um, they did a, a a great job just starting a you know company from the ground up. And they gave me that opportunity, and you know, I've been able to put that on my resume. And so that. That worked out great. Long story short, um, no, I have not done a project start to finish where it's my art and mm. text together. That'll happen someday, but if it does, it may be more of like a um, storybook fashion, a storybook for adults. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you you talk about the like uh, the the group aspect coming together. You know, doing you know critique sessions, writing sessions, you know, talking about uh, the craft. Um, do you go to events like uh, conventions or stuff? Do workshops, things of that nature? Uh, you know, try to to help out with the, the basic you know nut and bolts of uh, you know of your craft. You know, kind of share that. Uh, maybe done that a lot. That is something that we are going to be doing very shortly. Now that we have this book, we're going to be out at the different conventions and whatnot. And we'll likely get on some panels for that as well. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I know Kofa would certainly like to, to talk to you about uh, that aspect. Um, certainly would love to you know, see you guys at uh, Mile High Port Film Fest. Sure. You know, right. no, we're going to be a part of all those things. Yeah, we've yeah. been reaching out. By the way, I'm so glad they're back. Right? Yeah. Yeah, I miss those. Yeah, uh, yeah, I missed uh, you know Tim and those guys. You know, putting that together. It, that was kind of my introduction into you know the local horror community. Is that essentially, I mean, granted, I was uh, probably since like 2006 illustrating my own uh, horror comics uh, or illustrating somebody else's script, um, but. Again, kind of isolated, you know, only like hanging out with other comic book, uh, you know, folks, but not necessarily, you know, uh, submerged in, in that uh, genre. Um, but then uh, I think, uh, you know, some of the guys from uh, my World Film Fest, it's like, hey, we're sitting up vendor tables. We'd love to have some of the local artists, you know, that have, have wares to, to sell and, and, and you know, come out. And it's like, oh, man, that's great. So I had no idea. You know how um, engaged fans of the genre mm. really are. Uh, you know, coming from the, the the comic book world, where you know they're either hot or cold. But yeah, you know, and then going into like a work, um, you know, world where it seems like everybody's just hot. There, if it's something of horror, they want to know what it is, what it's about. You know. They're interested. They're curious. I was like, man, you know, that's that's fantastic to have a um, an audience, you know, that that's willing to to engage. Yes. Um, you know, and like I said, that's not always something that you get, you know, specifically with the, just the you know the comic book community. For sure. Yeah. There's something about horror that brings a lot of weird people together. Yeah. I, uh, I think. Yeah, I think just you know, like the visceral reaction, uh, the you know, primal aspect of you know, just getting to your root fears, so. or you know, even when you add all those different modes like comedy, or drama too, it's like it, there's something there to be engaged. Yeah, it's a big giant. Yeah, horror is a a big giant monolith in a good way, um, but it's one that you can. Um, Pretty firmly believe you can only enter through its subgenres. Yeah, I've always kind of seen those subgenres as doors, as an entryway into four. And you can some of those doors open together, you know, ones, two, or three. And then sometimes it's just one. You were talking about you know, comedy, uh, probably, yeah. You know, it it always seems to be you have to come at or through one of those. And so, as a result. 
it is a huge <laughs> uh, what's, what's interesting I mean the, what's kind of funny is within the world of literature it's kind of been classified as this you know, something you something small that you keep in the basement it's, you know, right um, we don't really like to talk about it it's like no it's been this huge thing this whole time mm -hmm. and um, what I like about this group is we just own that word it's in our name yeah, okay, it's not the Denver Dark Fiction Collective. I love dark fiction. I'm going to write plenty of what you're going to classify as you better classify as dark fiction. But um, it's it's really time that we start owning that word. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, just, there, there is nothing to be ashamed of it. You know, in in regard to it, um, it does only positive things when people engage it as an yeah. art form and just a point of discussion. I, I would be a hardy too that it's probably the you know the most uh, if not one of the most uh, malleable you know creative uh, you know, platforms correct uh, it, it can be anything you know um, you know the, just uh, last weekend flying home from uh, <laughs> Gulf Shores we uh, picked up a uh, you know, book of short stories by HP Lovecraft I've never actually read any HP Lovecraft mm -hmm. sure. but uh, and then yeah, you know, my girlfriend's like, this is going to give you nightmares. I am really susceptible to nightmares. Uh, I don't think you can really even picture anything that's in H.P. Lovecraft. It's so like big and vast. It won't give you nightmares. It'll just confuse you. Yeah. Well, and it, 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 it certainly did that. So it's that was really, I love it. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. And work. then, and then you know, when he when he actually gets kind of nailed down to like you know the, the details and then, you know and there's aspects of the nitty gritty. It's like oh, it's almost like you know texture. Not only I can visualize, but I can feel. Yeah, so that was yeah. pretty good. Okay. It, it, okay. Yeah, so my girlfriend's just like sitting there. Oh, uh, yeah, you're gonna get, you know, just tons of nightmares. I, I had to throw this book away because yeah, I read it and it just scared the shit out of me. Huh. And I was like, oh, that's great. I should read it on the plane. <laughs> <laughs> so, so like yeah, you know, like like that. And even in, in in just some of those short stories, like the the hound, and there was another one that I uh, yeah I burned through. Mm. Um, you know, it, it, just by one author too, just jumping back and forth from all these different you know genres and subgenres in the same short short book was pretty interesting. It's like, you know, it's like, oh, this would be a pretty good drama. You know, the doctor that freezes himself, and freezes you know a few other things to preserve himself. Yes, it was like that sounds great. That sounds like just science fiction or a really yeah. interesting drama, especially you know in today's you know, age. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, granted, I'm, now I'm getting off uh, subject, but a uh, couple couple days ago, saw that um, the articles running around that Blade Runner is now set in the past, and I was like, oh, <laughs> I was like that. I never never really dawned on me until until I saw the article. I was like, crap, I have to go back and rewatch that. You know, uh, you can shove anything into the horror yeah. cauldron. Yeah, you know, and we definitely people want to be a part of the group, we're not going to be like, oh, well, that's not horror. If you think it's horror, yeah. it's horror, you know? It, we don't care about defining your work. Yeah, it, it, it's it's nice to, to have that that sense of inclusivity, so, you know, uh, no matter what what you might be doing. Yeah, you know, there's, there's a lot of, you know, really good dramatic pieces that have those elements of just sheer fear and panic. You know, and that's what makes a good drama, too. Yep. And then there's a thriller versus horror. Actually, in our most recent edition of the Epitaph, our monthly newsletter, we have uh, Sam W. Anderson, who's a local author, mm -hmm. and he's on the advisory council. So we ask advisory council members to provide us with an answer to a question once a year. And when we generate that question through a poll on our Facebook group, Denver Horror Collective, just the Facebook group. And the question was, what's the difference between horror and thrill? And so. Mm -hmm. He gave a nice answer for that. So that's up oh, wow. on DenverHorror.com right now. Uh, you can just check it out. So nice. those kinds of questions we find to be really fascinating. And ultimately, it doesn't matter. And that's basically what he said. He's like, so just write whatever. Don't worry about it. Yeah. But it also lends itself to critical thinking. So, you know, it, it helps with that, that, you know, that critique of your own work. Uh, if, if you can you know, lead with those questions. Yeah, and ponder that. Yeah, because the world wants us to be compartmentalized. You know, yeah, people want 
labels and to put you in a bucket. And usually I resist it, but the horror bucket I'm fine with because it's a big enough bucket. Mm -hmm. I changed my analogy from cauldron to bucket. You know, so, <laughs> but, uh, yeah. The yeah. teacup that is horror. <laughs> yeah. the, the coffee mug. That's, yeah. that's dark, the coffee yeah. mug. That's yeah. Dark, the coffee Yeah, the black blood of creativity. Yeah. <laughs> the eyes need back those horror. Uh, there you go. Yeah. Any receptacle you can yeah. imagine. Right, right, right. Um, Oh shoot! I had something and I went away. Uh, <laughs> uh, so is life. Uh, no, that's uh, that, that's that's great to to really be able to you know uh, play around with those those modes and everything. Um, I'll say this: our time's uh, starting to wind down a little bit, but um, you know. After this, you guys are obviously going to be promoting the hell out of this. And, and based on you know our earlier conversation, you know, now I, I, I really want to buy this book. So great sales pitch. Um, but um, after uh, after this book, what's the next uh, big uh, publishing project for uh, the horror collector? Or is there one? That you're going to be working towards. I don't believe we have decided that as of yet. I think we're going to see how this goes and then, you know, weigh our options in the future. See if we're all still around. Okay. <laughs> Based on what happens for when we publish it, we, we can't say what will happen to us. Exactly. Also, individuals are publishing. Like Bobby just released his books. That's correct. Oh, fantastic. People will individually publish books. As, right. you know, we're all kind of like supporting each other. Yeah. Helping each other with questions and stuff like that. Right. So Bobby yeah. Crew has his book out, Dining with Devils, that just came out. I know Zach has a book out. You want to pitch that? Yeah. yeah. Seats for the Reaper? Yeah. Seats for the Reaper. It's, it's fantasy, but it's really dark and creepy, and uh, a lot of bad stuff happens. Seats for the Reaper, that's <laughs> on Amazon, right? That sounds absolutely delightful. Thank you. <laughs> and several of us have our short stories and stuff available out there um so we have our names up on denverhorror.com website so you can check out the individual folks and oh, where our stuff is but yeah we are going to start officially selling this book on tuesday the 26th of november which we're calling terror tuesday excellent because why not yep and so it'll be available on scam on amazon on the 26th and it will also be available at local bookstores thus far we're at maybe at book bar um, we are, as of today, at West Side Books in the West Highland neighborhood. Um, just talked to the Mutiny Information Cafe folks who said they were interested in well as well. So we're going to be spreading our seed around town, um, checking with Barnes & Noble's Tattered Cover, likely as well. So all of that's going to be happening. Nice. Um, the, the book release uh, party? Uh, is that, is that, uh, where is that again? That is December 1st, which is Sunday. Sunday, December 1st at 6 p.m. at Book Bar on Tennyson Street. Okay. So we're going to have all sorts of cool stuff. So a bunch of folks are going to be reading little teasers from it. We're going to have Stephen Graham Jones there and a few other folks. Um, we are going to be featuring the Disc of Dread, which is a, oh, a wheel that one gets to spin if they correctly answer a horror fiction trivia question. Then okay. you get to spin the wheel. That decides which stories are going to be read based on location because we have nice. stories in the anthology that take place in the city, kind of in the outskirts and then in the mountains. So any of those different things, you also can win giveaways. It'll be Denver Horror Collective t-shirts, cool stickers, uh, copies of the anthology, and it's gonna be hosted by uh, Holly Snyder. And we also hear that Krampus might make an appearance. Oh, excellent. Krampus is so delightful. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Not so much, but uh, yeah, December 1st at Book Bar. It'll be fun at 6 p.m. Nice. That's fantastic. Uh, so we'll, we'll put that information uh, um, on here and on the, the event page. Great. Uh, we'll throw it up on, uh, on our Facebook page as well. Nice. And then, um, yeah, if there's anything else uh, that, uh, you know, later on that you want to throw our way, you know, we're happy to, to help you know, uh, in any way we can. Um, and then, yeah, the Mutiny guys, you know, these guys are great for, uh, you know, supporting uh, just whatever local creative stuff is happening. So I, I would definitely recommend, uh, you know, even after like you, know, you do uh, your initial uh, you know promotions of this, 
feel free, you know, schedule with uh, Jim sometime to do some readings or something. As well. Oh, sure. No, we're going to be doing a series of Excellent. events over time, probably at Denver Library. Yeah, we'd love to oh, be here. Great. Yeah, Denver Public Library. Yeah, they're, they're really strong supporters, too. Yep. That's, that's fantastic. And not to rush us towards an ending, but I, I, I personally wanted to say, um, before any of this ends, thank you, Dan, and uh, thank you, Mutiny. Yep. Information Cafe and call it a festival of horror. I love that name. Yeah. It's well, I, I love that Con is out of the name. You know, it's yeah. uh, it's really a celebration of what it should be. All of us folks getting together. So yeah. <laughs> yeah, very much so. Uh, yeah, just kind of you know uh, engaging and uh, you know making new friends over you know the uh, the genre and art forms that uh, you enjoy. Yeah, so yeah, and with our thing, just a little bit of our thing, uh, yeah, it's, um, it'll be uh, next uh, September uh, 11th through the 13th, 2020, at uh, Embassy Suites on uh, North Havana, and that's um, uh, Havana and I-7. So it's, yeah, Embassy Suites, really small, intimate uh, hotel, but uh, you, know, it, you know, it'll create much more of a personal event, uh, and hopefully that much more engaging. I was just there. At, was it Mile High Con? I yes, Rocky Mountain Con. Yeah, yeah. And that's where I, I um, saw Brett and Jeannie. Oh, yeah. And they yeah, sold my me partners. one of your t shirts. So, oh, excellent. Excellent. But um, as you can see, I did not wear it tonight. Because I'm, tonight I'm all about Damn straight. Brand loyalty. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. You, you've got awesome stuff but, to uh, Next time we meet, if we do, if we do have a little reading, I will uh, kind of support the. Oh, at the truck stop? T-shirt. So, yeah. <laughs> the truck stop. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, um, yeah. it's all about collaboration. Right, right. That's how it goes. Yeah, that's that's what that's about. <laughs> well, cool. Thanks, guys. Yeah, Josh, Jameis, thanks for, for coming out, you know, talking about your book and, and uh, you know, Denver Horror Collective and uh, all, all the stuff that, uh, that you guys are doing. You know, I can't wait to see, you know, um, yeah, but how this goes, and yeah, I can't wait to read it. Um, and then, uh, yeah, I just want to say, you know, thanks for everybody who uh, who showed up and came out. Yes. And, uh, you know, greatly appreciate you coming out. Um, and uh, also, uh, my thanks to uh, Mutiny Information Cafe for allowing us to, to occupy space and take up their Wi Fi. Um, and then, and yeah. And drink their coffee. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. This is kind of my home away from home. Is this place? So uh, I get a lot of work done too. Um, but anyway, um, uh, I'm Dan Crozier with uh, Cofo Live and Undead. And, uh, thanks again, guys. Have a good night. Good night. Woo! <laughs> that was fun.